Okay, I'm Rob Hobson, nutritionist and uh, head of nutrition at Healthspan, and I'm joined today by Dr. Hilary, who's a GP and TV doctor, and you're going to be unveiling the secrets to uh, <laughs> a happy menopause. Well, yeah, menopause, it needn't be an unhappy time, and, and yet 50% of women undergoing the menopause never go and see a healthcare professional. They still believe that they have to suffer in silence. And you know they can have a, a number of physical and psychological symptoms, which can be really distressing and very inconvenient. Just to run through some of them, I mean, uh, mood swings, irritability, anxiety, depression, really common. Sleep disturbance, very common. Physically, hot flushes, night sweats, women will be familiar with. But skin changes, hair changes. Um, and, and women can feel pretty awful at this time. And it doesn't just happen like that. It comes on gradually, so they don't notice any dramatic effect. Um, the good news is that we can do a great deal to alleviate those symptoms, if not get rid of them altogether. Okay, and how long does the menopause last? Well, in the menopause, the menopause w w starts for most women, age average 51, but it can occur much earlier. So some women in their 30s can have a premature menopause when the ovaries stop producing eggs and, and estrogen as well. Um, on the whole, it's going to happen between the age of 45 and 55. Um, and then once the periods have stopped for a year, by definition, you're in your menopause. And these days, women will live another 30, 40, 50 years if they're lucky, whereas in the past, you know, women didn't live nearly as long as that, so the menopause wasn't a, a huge problem then. Now, half their life comes after the menopause, and it's only right that we try and treat any unpleasant symptoms that they have. And I get asked a lot of questions when I'm working in my field about perimenopause. I don't think many women are familiar with that term. No, it just means the period leading up to the menopause, which is four to ten years okay. before the actual menopause when periods have stopped for a year. So during that time, the ovaries start to produce less mature eggs, the oestrogen level is beginning to decline, and you're kicking in with those hot flushes, those night sweats, and mood swings, uh, uh, you know, you might feel lack of confidence, uh, anxiety, those kind of subtle symptoms. They can occur for many years before periods actually stop. That's the perimenopause. Okay. And um, mood swings, hot flushes, I think mood swings we hear a lot from women during the menopause. Is there anything that you could recommend to yeah. help with mood swings? Yeah, absolutely. What, what women need to know is that uh, they understand that uh, hormones like oestrogen have an effect on the breast, have an effect on the womb. That's absolutely given. They know that. What they don't know is that there are oestrogen receptors in the brain. And that explains why when oestrogen levels drop, those receptors in the brain cause those mood swings. It's not their fault. It's not an emotional thing. Okay. It's physical. Um, yeah. There's a physical reason. So what you can do is you can replace the oestrogen. That's what hormone replacement therapy means. You're replacing the hormones that cause the menopause. So there's pharmaceutical HRT, but before we get to that stage, if you're only having a mild menopause, you can adopt a healthy lifestyle. So exercise helps to produce those endorphins which you know, reset your emotional thermostat, if you like, and keep you feeling happier, less anxious, less depressed. You can also turn to a healthy diet. And you know, Rob, that yeah. foods like these can really make a difference. Yeah, definitely. I mean, again, we're going to mention soy. Um, soy is traditionally used. It's been uh, eaten a lot in Japan. I think Japan doesn't even have a word for the menopause. That's correct. Um, and we also have high fiber foods. I know again that with high fibre foods that helps your body to get rid of excess oestrogen um, and I think just following a healthy balanced diet again um, I think with the uh, hot flushes it's good for women to avoid certain foods, caffeine, yeah. spicy foods, any stimulant, any stimulant for the heart um, and circulation, unfortunately alcohol. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know that they t that seems to trigger off a hot flush, and they can be really unpleasant. Uh, most any women will, will know that going through the menopause. So uh, what you eat has a has a big bearing on on how you feel, um, and then if your symptoms are uh, affecting the quality of your life, you don't have to live with them. Um, you could go and see your doctor, talk about HRT, which comes in the form of tablets or patches for the skin or gels. And these days, doctors are much better, especially at specialised menopause clinics, at tailoring the dose and the type of uh, the hormone for you, so that if you have a skin patch, it doesn't uh, go through the liver like a tablet has to do in order to have its effect. It goes directly into the bloodstream, so lower doses, uh, more control over the um, uh, administration into the bloodstream and you can adjust the dose accordingly. Okay, we mentioned um, 
I mentioned soy earlier, so natural alternatives, certain herbal remedies. Absolutely. St John's um, wort, for example, is very useful. It's a natural antidepressant, um, and if you use a high quality um, a, a supplement of St John's wort, there's very good evidence that it can reduce hot flushes very considerably and improve mood swings. So that's worth considering, as is black cohosh. Uh, black cohosh is a herb that's been used for many, many years for menopausal symptoms. It's part of the buttercup family and uh, it has an effect on, on mood uh, and on those physical symptoms as well. So they can't do any harm. Uh, some people are worried about the side effects of HRT. They've heard a lot about blood clots, a lot mm. about um, uh, heart disease. Those risks have been exaggerated, but nevertheless, if you're nervous about HRT, think about natural, gentle things like St. John's wort and black cohosh. Talk to your doctor about them too, and if you're on any other medication, mention that you're thinking of taking those supplements. Okay, just briefly about HRT. Is there a certain amount of time that you should be on HRT? Well, the NHS and the uh, NICE guidelines will say no more than five years, two to five years, uh, by which time most of your symptoms will have abated. But for some women, when they reduce or stop the dosage, the symptoms return. And unfortunately, some women will go on having hot flushes for the rest of their lives. So if you're one of those unlucky ones, then there's absolutely no reason why you can't take HRT for as long as you want to, provided you're seeing a doctor on a regular basis for checkups to make sure that you've got none of the side effects that occur sometimes with HRT. Great. OK, thanks, Dr. Ellie. And for Thank more information about the menopause? I think it's a very good website, menopausematters.co.uk. And then, of course, there's NHS Choices as well. Brilliant. OK, thank you. Pleasure.